Hey everyone, Malhar here from Before and After Tennis, and today we're going to take a look at what I consider to be a really simple, beautiful, and efficient forehand, and that's Sebastian Corda's forehand. So what is efficiency? It's just the least amount of moving parts, economy of motion, and why do you want to have efficient strokes? It's so that they don't break down under pressure, and you can recreate them again and again under challenging circumstances. Let's go ahead, we'll watch how Korda hits first at an eighth speed. Here's his first forehand, we'll show you his next one. And then I'm actually going to ask that you go through and film yourself from behind and check the checkpoints that we're going to touch on in the next few minutes. See if you can hit these checkpoints as well to make your forehand more efficient. So let's go back to the first one where he's using a neutral stance. I want you to watch from the ready position here. He knows where this feet is going obviously because he doesn't have a split step, but this is the first move. The first move, the unit turn, all he's doing is turning his shoulders. The phrase is leave the hands alone and turn the shoulders. So from the ready position, it's just a unit turn and roughly your head and the racket head should be around the same height. Check if you're getting into this position and more importantly, by the time the ball has bounced, is the back edge of your racket facing towards the back fence here. From Vic Braden, you want to have a two-part swing. This is the first part of that two-part swing. Watch the back edge. It's already to the back fence by the time the ball has bounced. Players often try to create a delay or a lag or whatever it might be so that they can generate more racket speed. Sure, you could potentially do that, but then it also causes timing issues. The next part I want you to focus in on is look at how the racket falls on the inside of the body and look at how Corda is really using his body to generate the racket speed. So I'll show you on this neutral forehand as well and I'll show you on the open one. He has separation, so look at his hips and look at his shoulders. Notice that his shoulders are turned more than his hips. That's because you want to create separation so all of that energy from the body segments can unwind into the contact. The second thing I want to touch on is he's using Vic Braden's sit on a chair. So look here, we have a chair. He's really loaded into the ground. He's sunk into a chair. And from here, he's going to unwind those segments and he's going to lift. Tennis is a lifting game. You hear again and again this idea of staying down, but watch his head. As he pushes against the ground, the segments unwind and he's going to lift. You don't want to imagine that there is a roof over your head when you're actually hitting the ball. So that was in the neutral, but I want to show you as well in the open here. Notice that his shoulders are turned more than his hips so that he can really unwind those segments into the contact. So when you film yourself from behind, check if you're getting adequate turn. You want those shoulders turned more than your hips. And this could be more than a technical issue. It could also be a physical issue if you have enough thoracic rotation, if your body has limitations. These are all the things you need to think about as a tennis player. Now the next part that we'll address is this inside out swing. So not to be confused with inside out in terms of the direction that he's hitting the ball, he is hitting inside out forehand, but we're talking about the swing, how the racket moves from close to away, close to away, and that's how you get that racket moving as fast as possible. It should be a lever at the end of your body where you coil and turn the segments away and you unwind them into the contact. 
This is a real fundamental if you want to learn to hit the ball hard and you want to hit it well. You need to be able to swing from inside to out this way. And the last part I want to show you is this finish and this catch. Clear all of this and look at where Korda is finishing with his racket. Notice that he's unwinding the segments, but also he essentially stops the whole left side of his body because it should be, quote unquote, a reactive break. And look at where he makes the catch. It's almost by his head. This is referred to as 2-1-2 from Braden as well, where if we go back, he's got two hands on the racket. He turns the segments away, he uses the ground, he gets the racket inside, he unwinds, he goes away from the body, and look at where his hand finishes. This is where your hand should be finishing as well. As long as you have enough compression outwards to the target, you can still finish your hand high so that you'll get a topspin, but also pace heading outwards to the target. There you go, everyone. A really beautiful, simple, and efficient forehand. You want to have efficient, clean strokes so that they don't break down under pressure so that you can recreate them again and again so that your brain has less calculations to make to get the racket face into the right position when it really matters.